Garth Loquitter, welcome to my channel. If you're a newer player or just looking to get more efficient at Grand Arenas, this channel is made for you. Today, I'm going to talk about early Rebels. We're going to go over three different options for good Rebel teams, why you would do each one of those teams, what it gets you in the game, and uh, in the end, I'm going to recommend one of those options as the best option. I've also had a request to kind of map out, because I've done several of these uh, team video now, uh, map out which teams would go first, second, and third. I won't get to that with this video, but I promise the next video I put out, we'll try to make a, a comprehensive plan and map out your first five or six teams for you. All right. So why build Rebels as one of your early teams? And the answer to that is because they're easy. There's a lot of Rebel teams that are easy to access and easy to get characters for. Um, and early in the game, you don't want to be fighting with characters that have a bunch of hard node farms, and um, uh, getting characters that are easy to access is, is helpful. Um, Rebels also get you access to the Emperor Palpatine event. Uh, Emperor Palpatine is a good character. Um, usually you're going to have an Empire team floating around anyway, so getting, getting the Emperor going is a good thing. With the Phoenix, for example, you can get Thrawn in his ship. Or if you do a very traditional rebel um, team, you can get Commander Luke Skywalker. Also, there's events in the game that require you to have on a uh, rebel team to play. And uh, this will allow you to participate in those events and get the loot from those uh, uh, when they drop. Uh, there's a lot of good fleet characters and ships that come out of the rebel faction. And uh, a lot of the Rebels are flexible. So if you get a team of five Rebels going, and later on you get your Commander Luke Skywalker or some other Rebels, um, it's pretty easy to build two Rebel teams um, out of the characters that you have. So they're pretty flexible, pretty good teams. So the first option is the original Rebellion. And that's Stormtrooper Han, Old Ben, Farm Boy Luke, Princess Leia, and R2-D2. And those are the characters that are needed to unlock Commander Luke Skywalker. So uh, he is really a great rebel leader. And if you want to go for him early game, uh, these are the five characters that you need to go for to work through his event. Um, you can also unlock Palpatine uh, with the rebels uh, from this team. Now, uh, the bad part about this is this team contains two characters that you have to get to seven star that are pretty bad in Farm Boy Luke and Princess Leia. They're just really substandard characters. Um, so don't overgear them if you do go for this team. Um, the other, one of the other issues is you do need an Empire team uh, in order to get R2-D2. You don't want to already start a Rebel team with five Rebels and then later you still have to get R2-D2 to unlock Commander Luke Skywalker. So you want to get to that R2-D2 right away and that requires you to do the Empire team. And then if these are the five characters that you build and you get Commander Luke Skywalker, you still don't have a good team. Um, Luke is a good character. Uh, Old Ben can be good. Uh, R2-D2 is a good character. Um, but the other three aren't that great. And like I said, the, the two with Farm Boy Luke and Princess Leia, I wouldn't, wouldn't invest in anything past getting this event unlocked. So uh, that's, <clears throat> that's one option. The next option is the Phoenix, and for a long time I know this was an option that was recommended on a lot of the bigger channels uh, to go with the Phoenix, and uh, you can unlock them pretty easily. The Phoenix characters are easy to access. Uh, I would do Hera, Zeb, Kanan, Ezra, and Chopper. Uh, Sabine just takes too long to farm, and she doesn't have an alternate way to get her very easily, so those are the five that I would go with. And uh, the positives, you get Palpatine, plus you also get access to Thrawn. And Thrawn is a really good and flexible character in the game, so you won't regret having Thrawn. And to Thrawn's capital ships, um, once you get the, the Rebel uh, Phoenix ships up and going. So it's a solid early game team, and it's good early ships. On the negative side, the, the Phoenix team is, is quite strong at the beginning, at the start of the game. But they fall off fast. As soon as other people start getting Jedi teams put together or, you know, even some First Order teams or Empire teams, um, the, the Phoenix really drop off fast. And then because you typically won't continue to invest in your Phoenix teams, 
um, the Phoenix ships also drop off. So the Ghost and the Phantom are pretty good. The Phantom 2 has a great reinforce ability that cools down reinforce and lets you do two reinforcements right in a row. But uh, once, once you quit investing in your Phoenix, it's really a weak ship and bringing it in for its reinforce ability isn't that great because it's just going to, you know, die to the other ships that are uh, far past its level. So with the Phoenix, uh, I, I don't know. It's not a bad way to start the game. You do get access to some good stuff with them. It's not bad. But on my main account, uh, they, they just sit there, you know, mid-geared and, and look the other way and never look back. The third option that I've been looking at is the uh, Rebel Fighters with Mon Mothma. And um, I've got Mon Mothma relic out on my main account. I've also got a relic K2SO. And I'm convinced that K2SO is the best tank to put on a Mon Mothma team. Uh, really love K2SO. Cassian, I, I think he's got synergy with K2, and he's got just debuffs for days that, that cripple the opposing team. So I think for early Mon Mothma team, K2SO and Cassian are key. Both of those characters are easy to get. I think K2 comes out of the Galactic War store, and Cassian comes out of Squad Arena store. So they're easy to pick up shards for, and they're great with this Mon Mothma team. And then the two others that you put on the team are optional. And uh, just to talk about a few of the options, you can put Biggs and Wedge in those two slots, and that gives you a very offensive team because Biggs and Wedge both have good offensive skills and some turn meter gain stuff that makes them hit real hard. Um, you could put in Baze Malbus and Chariot Imway. Uh, that's an extremely defensive team. Baze is a second tank on the team. Chariot puts uh, heal over times over everybody. And this team is really, really, um, if you want to build a, a, a defensive version of the Von Mothma team, that's really strong. Biston and the Scarif uh, Rebel Pathfinder. If you're ever going to build Biston's U-Wing ship and you have to build up Biston as a character, and the Scarif uh, Rebel, um, they're not very good characters in any other teams, but Mon Mothma can absorb them right into this team and uh, make really good use of them. So uh, those characters are a possibility if you're going to build Biston's U-Wing. And then uh, Pow and the Hoth Scout, I think these are the most um, strongest synergy pair that you could put there. Uh, Pow has an ability that gives everybody offense up, and he gets to take a lot of turns and uh, gets turn meter back whenever another rebel does a basic attack. So he's just going all the time. And then the Hoth Scout um, has a 40% chance to give everybody turn meter. So between those two, they're taking a lot of turns, giving over a lot of turn meter. That really fuels up your team and makes everybody go a lot. And then for the last two that I would suggest... Uh, Jen Urso, she's a little bit harder to pick up the shards for, but I think if you had K2 and Cassian and you put in Jin and uh, Chewbacca and 3PO, that team is crazy strong. Um, I use Chupio on my Mon Mothma team, and the, the synergies that he has, Mon Mothma shares stats, then Chupio reshares stats, and uh, he assists whenever a rebel attacks. So even though he's not a rebel fighter for the purposes of Mon Mothma's ability, he does assist every time anybody goes. And uh, the great thing with this is, um, we'll talk about K2SO here in a minute, but, uh, but Chupio and K2SO have an inter interesting interaction as well. So the positives are you can unlock Palpatine, and this is a very strong team um, until people get Treya. Uh, Treya is really the counter to this team. And, um, you know, even though people say Jawas is also a counter, I like to run Tenacity on a couple of these characters so the Jawas can't even get bombs put on me. And it leaves this strong against pretty much everything except Treya. Uh, of course, later in the game, everybody will pick up a Treya from the Sith Raids. But, uh, but until then, this team is really hard to get through. It, uh, it makes the Rebel pilots useful. Uh, so that's really great. The negatives, uh, this team is weak until Mon Mothma gets the Zade on her leadership. Uh, she at least needs the Zade on her leadership, and then she needs another Zade to become untargetable later. Uh, but uh, the team really is a non-starter until, <laughs> until she gets that Zeta. So based on those three 
different ideas uh, what what I recommend. Now, for my Darth Lokwitter account, I picked the first option. I wanted to go for Commander Luke Skywalker. But what I find is as I'm building up my characters in this account, I just can't bring myself to prioritize these guys because I know that they're not good characters. So I'm working on old Ben because I like him. He's a good character. He's a Jedi. He'll fit in my Jedi team, if nothing else. Um, but uh, the farm boy Luke and the Leia, I just I can't put priority on them, knowing that even once I build them up, they're going to be pretty useless. And at best, it's going to be a back row placeholder in Grand Arena until I get a team up and running that uses Commander Luke Skywalker. So I think this probably wasn't the best choice. And looking back over my shoulder, I would say now, if I did it again, I think my Rebel team would definitely be the, the Mon Mothman, the Rebel fighters, uh, because Mon Mothma is a leader in, her, in herself. She doesn't, you don't have to unlock a Commander Luke or a different Rebel leader uh, because Mon Mothma is as good as, uh, as good as it gets. Uh, this, make no mistake, this is a really good team. Uh, it gets you a great team and it'll allow you to do a lot. Um, and you can mix and match later, you know, if you build Biggs and Wedge, for example, early. And then later you get the Commander Luke Skywalker, you can split Biggs and Wedge off and put different pilots in with Mon Mothman. There's a lot of things, a lot of flexibility. So I think that's really uh, the way to go. So what does Mon Mothma do that's so impressive? So... Her leadership is just a ton of stuff. So at the start of battle, all Rebel fighter allies gain 8% of their combined base, max health, protection, offense, defense, potency, and tenacity. So basically all of these guys get a little bit better based on their base stats. Now, you can pump up somebody's offense with mods, for example. That doesn't count. It's only counting their base stats for the purpose of the sharing. But still, it's uh, uh, 40% if you take five characters all together. So she and all Rebel Fighters. So if there's four other Rebel Fighters, um, it, it's a 40% more or less boost to, to those stats, uh, which is really um, makes all of these characters bigger, tougher, stronger, more offense, uh, more potency, and more tenacity. So it's, it's good. Then the next part of it, she and all Rebel Fighters have a 100% chance to assist each other whenever they use an ability. Deals 90% less damage unless the ability deals no damage, then the penalty is reduced. Uh, so basically, the assists aren't going to be doing that much damage, but what it allows you to do is it triggers the basic attacks on your Rebel Fighters over and over again. And if they do something good on their basic attack, it'll allow you to spread debuffs or buff your own team or whatever it is that they do good on their basic attacks. Uh, she also has an ability that summons a sixth character, summon a rebel trooper. If a rebel trooper is already present, they're promoted. And then if you look at the basic attack for the rebel, dispel all buffs on target enemies and deal physical damage. So what this team is missing is a way to remove buffs. And here, Mon Mothma just gives us a way to remove buffs. Uh, so if somebody taunts, we don't want to hurt that person. We shoot them once, strip off their taunt. Next, uh, next time we have a character going, we can get around the taunt. Uh, so this is really strong. And then if it's been promoted to officer or commander, it's, it's got days for a turn. And when you can strip off buffs and put a days back on them, ooh, that's strong. And then she does have another ability that revives a random rebel fighter with 40% health and protection. Everybody equalizes. And then Mon Mothma does a rally that, that gives everybody a boost. So... Just a ton of good abilities. So Mon Mothma, what you don't see, she will never attack. Um, even her basic just says uh, she, she does nothing and everybody gains 6% health and protection. Um, so she never attacks, but um, her offense is still shared with everybody due to the way that her skills work. So oddly enough, it's not bad to have offense on her, even though she never will attack herself. And her uh, rebel uh, fighter that she summons, the rebel trooper, is based on her stats. So if you want him doing a little more damage, having a little offense on her isn't a bad thing. But, uh, but Mon Mothma, just a, a huge support. And with all of these skills together, just allows you to take these Rebel Fighters and make a real solid team. So why do I like K2 and Cassian? Let's talk about Cassian first. He, he just has excellent debuffs. He's going to just 
debuff the other team into the dirt. It's crazy <laughs> how much stuff this guy has. Um, Shot Grenade only has a two-turn cooldown, so he's throwing this thing out right and left. And then he does have other good synergies with K2SO, who I've already said we like as our, our tank for this team. So with his basic, he deals physical damage to the enemy with an 85% chance to inflict buff immunity. Folks, hear me now, believe me later. Buff immunity is a crazy strong debuff. Crazy strong. The, the ability that the other team, when they would get a buff, don't get a buff is just crazy. Uh, Grandmaster Yoda, for example, if you get this buff immunity on Grandmaster Yoda, his best skills are, are garbage. He uh, doesn't get any buffs on him when he, when he does his little attack, and when he tries to spread him around with meditation, um, there's no buffs to share. So, I mean, there are characters that can just get crippled by this buff immunity. It, it's so strong. Um, that and ability block, I think, are two of the greatest debuffs in the game, and um, he gets both of them. Um, so here's another uh, skill, deal special damage to the target enemy, and for each debuff present, um, inflict that debuff on the target for one turn. We'll see why that's good here in a second. Okay, the big block over here is, is his shock grenade. It inflicts ability block, defense down, healing immunity, offense down, and speed down once each on random enemies for two turns. So he kind of throws the grenade, and those debuffs just pop up on different people. If the primary target is Empire, expose him for two turns. And if K2 is present, he's called to assist. And then you get 20% turn meter for each debuffed enemy. Now, with other characters on the team also debuffing and Cassian debuffing, by the time he throws this grenade for the second time, pretty much everybody's going to be debuffed. There's going to be five characters he's going to get. 100% turn meter, which means he throws the grenade, instantly goes again, and then when his next turn comes around, he throws the grenade and goes again. So he, he gets two for one turns almost all the time, unless the enemy team can really deal with these debuffs uh, quickly and, and in many different ways. Otherwise, they stick and, and he's just going all the time. So once he gets all these debuffs spread around, if there's anybody who doesn't have the debuffs on him, then he uses the special damage skill and just uh, you know smacks all of the debuffs onto that character too. And uh, especially when you want to get buff immunity and all that stuff on a specific character, you just do this and, and get all those nasty debuffs going. So his kit is, is really cool. I mean, it's, it's uh, I think, underestimated uh, how good this is. And with Mon Mothma calling assists and his ability to spread these buff immunity around just by doing a basic attack, it's, it's really good. Um, so K2SO. K2 has this really cool mechanic where um, he loses taunt when he takes damage. And we've talked before in other videos how it's hard to keep taunt up because there's a lot of good characters in the game that remove buffs. So you get up a taunt and it gets removed right away. But K2SO doesn't care. The first time he takes damage, he's going to lose that taunt anyway. And as long as we can prevent him from getting too many debuffs on him, he uh, uh, will most often counterattack after he takes that damage. So he takes damage, loses taunt, counterattacks, and then he has a chance to get taunt back when he takes an action, and the counterattack counts as an action, so he gets the taunt right back. Um, he has a 70% chance of offense down on a basic, and this character is extremely annoying. He is constantly in and out of taunt, getting his taunt back. And um, if, if you want to work around him and, and hit Cassian, for example, um, you may hit Cassian once and then the next time you go to attack, uh, or if uh, the Mon Mothma team gets a turn anywhere in between, as soon as you do that assist train and K2SO does his basic, he gets the taunt back up again. It is incredibly annoying to work around and if your opponent tries to use area effect you know damage all skills uh, that's also going to trigger him to come across an attack and get his taunt back up again so it's really a cool mechanic and i said uh, 3po and chewy have an interesting um, interaction with him um, 3po and chewy assists whenever a rebel takes an action and this 
counterattack counts as an action. So if you put 3PO and Chewie on the same team as K2, every time he counterattacks, uh, they will assist. And yeah, that is a ton of damage. That is a ton of damage gets put out. Um, I use that in the uh, event stuff all the time with Rebels. That's my Rebel team that I use over there on my main account. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's impressive, it really is. Uh, but we're not, uh, we're not recommending 2PO for this team yet. We're gonna recommend instead that we go with Biggs and Wedge as the other two. And, um, you know, they're pilots, they get good ships, and you can make a rebel fleet with home one early with this. So uh, I think Biggs and Wedge is the way to go. The Mon Mothma team can suffer from uh, damage anemia. They have a lot of assists, but it's all at 90% less damage. So they go a million times, but they really don't do any damage. Um, Biggs and Wedge change that. They both have great damage skills. They have a lot of damage every time they go and every time they assist. Um, they have potential to increase damage more. So, so I like these guys to make this a very offensive team uh, as our first Rebel team. If we look first over here um, at, at Biggs, Deal damage to target enemy with a 50% chance to gain critical chance up for two turns. On a critical hit, gain, uh, grant a random ally critical damage up. So he's going to be giving himself critical chance up, and that's going to help him get critical hits. So every time he does an assist, the hope is he's spreading around this critical damage up, and the rest of the characters on your team are, are getting increased critical damage. Um, so even though he's not doing that much damage off of his basic when he's doing that assist, He's still helping them all to do more damage when it's their turn. The next ability, deal physical damage to target enemy and call an assist. If Wedge is present, he also assists. And those assists will happen at full damage. So the, uh, um, these assists happen first, and then Mon Mothma kicks in, and uh, the secondary assists happen after that. Uh, but this will call potentially an assist plus Wedge to also assist. And all attacks have 75% more critical chance, so most likely you're gonna get three critical hits with this. Uh, that's gonna do a good chunk of damage. And then Biggs has this passive, and especially if you're playing them against an Empire team, something like Darth Vader and Palpatine and Grand Moff Tarkin, they all have area effect abilities that they're gonna use. Um, and as soon as he takes damage from an Empire enemy, he gains 100% turn meter and evasion up for four turns. Um, so if you put this team against an Empire team, um, every time Biggs takes damage, he's going, uh, taking another turn, which can be, it makes the, the match over real fast and not in favor of the Empire, because uh, Biggs just takes like six turns in a row for the, every time the enemy goes. Um, then we look at uh, Wedge over here on the right. Uh, his basic attack inflicts a defense down until the end of Wedge's next turn, and it deals 50% more damage to targets that already have defense down. And remember, Cassian's ability is also putting defense down on people. So between this basic and Cassian's debuffs, um, they're going to have defense down on characters and be able to, to punch him for some extra damage with this. His next skill is a physical damage to all enemies that does 50% more to Empire enemies or enemies with 50% health or more. So, you know, first couple times that he pulls the trigger on this attack, um, everybody's going to have uh, more than 50% health. Uh, so this is going to do uh, a lot of damage and 50% more damage on top of that. Uh, so that's a hard-hitting skill. And then this little uh, passive down here that Wedge has, 12% offense and 9 speed for each ally with full health. So at the start of the battle, that's 45 speed, which early in the game is really, 45 is a lot of speed. And 12% offense times 5 is 60% offense. So if he, he goes you know, first or second and he does that area effect attack, he's got 60% offense already, plus it's dealing 50% more damage. Um, he can really drop a bomb early on in the match. And then if uh, Biggs Darklighter is present, he also gets those skills. So uh, same thing for, for Biggs. As long as he and Wedge are on the same team, he also gets the speed and the extra offense. 
So these guys hit hard. They take a lot of turns. They go fast. And then um, once people start dropping below full health, they get 15 speed for each ally without full health. So they drop off the offense bonus but gain even more speed. Um, so they, they, they will go a lot. So for modding Mon Mothma, I really like tenacity on Mon Mothma. She's got um, a very high base tenacity anyway, which she's sharing with the rest of the group with the uh, percents that she shares with her leadership. And eventually she's untargetable, but even if she's untargetable, she can still get hit with area effect debuffs or debuffs that get transferred to your leader. Um, and that can cripple the team because you're really counting on her basic ability to get triggered every time with the assists. That gets you back uh, health and protection and removes debuffs from the weakest ally. So if she is never getting stunned or dazed, she's always there to assist and always removing debuffs and always regenerating health and protection for the team. So I feel like it's very important for Mon Mothma not to be um, debuffed. So I, I do three tenacity sets. Um, she has plus 50 speed as one of her passives. Um, she's got a really terrible base speed, I think something like 110 or something like that. So putting a speed set on her isn't a great idea, but I do think speed arrow and lots of speed subs, you do want her to go quickly uh, if she can. Um, but again, I would do that with three tenacity sets and um, just get her high tenacity so she's not getting debuffed. I also like to have K2SO with tenacity for the, a lot of the same reasons. Um, his counterattack chance goes down if he's debuffed. So as long as we're uh, you got good tenacity on him, preventing him from getting debuffed, then he can always have the counterattack and keep his taunt up. Uh, he also benefits from protection and from defense. He has a quite a high defense, especially at relic levels. So putting defense on him makes him a lot more tanky. Um, protection. If you ever do uh, have a spare Zeta and give K2SO this Zeta, he gets 1% max protection every time he takes damage. And that's not going to help you too much in PvP or Grand Arena, but in the events where you're doing like eight rounds against Rebels or something like that, he takes damage, uh, you know, 280 times and, and ends up with uh, acres and acres of protection. So it's not a terrible Zeta. Uh, definitely not something you want to give a priority to. But I would say when you're modding him, protection and defense. And then again, I would put three tenacity sets on him, tenacity on the cross, and just uh, make sure he doesn't get debuffed. That's his job is just to be annoying and not die, and uh, keeping the debuffs off of him is important. For Cassian, um, Cassian does need potency. He's got all those debuffs all over the place that he's using, so he needs enough potency to make that stick. Um, I don't think he's really a main damage dealer in the team, so just make him speed, you know, give him some speed so he's fast enough that he gets lots of turns, and uh, and give him a potency on the cross, uh, potency offset, and, and make sure that he's got enough potency to make those buffs stick. I wouldn't go crazy and give him three potency sets, for example. I would just give him a speed set, a potency set, potency on the cross, and then if you can find out some other potency subs that make sense, that's good. But uh, that's Cassian. And then Biggs and Wedge are damage. So put an offense set on them with crit chance. Uh, you could also use a speed set if you want to use a speed set. Uh, and find some crit chance somewhere in there. And then I would definitely do a crit damage triangle for both of these guys because when you do get a critical hit, you want it to hurt real bad. Um, I would put a speed arrow on them for sure to take advantage of their passive speed boosts. So if you have a character that's already reasonably fast, then you're adding another 45 speed on top of him. Um, early game, that's going to get you going ahead of the opposing team. And when him and um, when Biggs and Wedge can both drop a shot before the other team gets to go, uh, that's a big deal. And remember, every time they go, the rest of the team will assist under Mon Mothma, and uh, the, the other team will be crippled before they even get to start their turns. So that's a bit how we want to run this team. And then, you know, with Cassian and, and K2SO being recommendations, I feel like I have to comment uh, because they're both characters that go into Cassian's U-Wing ship uh, as well as Jenna Urso as the third. 
And uh, so is Cassian's U-Wing any good if you're going to be building these characters anyway? And in my opinion, um, it's one of the top three reinforcement abilities in the game. Uh, I use this in my um, first order fleet with my finalizer, and it's a key to how I'm able to beat the negotiator fleets that are placed against me. Um, the reinforce ability strips all the buffs off the opposing team, and Gorilla Strike calls in an assist, so you could take your biggest damage dealer assist. Uh, they'll have all their buffs removed and have defense down from the reinforce ability, and you can usually kill somebody on the turn that you reinforce. Um, infiltration tactics is another uh, good skill. You can use that to put one of your damage dealers under stealth. And there's some really annoying fleet buffs like buzz droids, buff immunity, or daze. And uh, you clear off those debuffs and put them under stealth so that your damage dealer doesn't get killed. Then you've also got threat assessment. It's, uh, it's not that great of a skill, but it does put tenacity down on another ship. And especially if you have other debuffs that you want to apply, that opens the way to, to get those debuffs in. So I think it's definitely a fantastic support ship. Um, I use mine all the time and would recommend it to anybody. And then, so that gives you fleet synergy with, with the whole team then, because with Biggs and Wedge, um, that's also two ships that can be used early for a home one fleet. Uh, and you could start with just Biggs, Wedge, and Houndstooth as your first three, and then use Cassian's U-Wing as a reinforcement, plus, you know, whatever other good ships you have at the time. And then eventually, um, for your Rebel fleet, you do want to get that Rebel Y-Wing, the pilotless tank. Uh, that is an incredible ship. Uh, pick up Han's, uh, Han Solo's Millennium Falcon um, as one of your initial three. And then Biston's U-Wing is usually considered to be the, one of the best starting ships for the Rebel fleet. And then you still have Cassian, Biggs, and Wedge uh, to pull in as reinforcements for your Rebel fleet uh, uh, past the starting three. So... Uh, building that fleet early won't hinder what you want to do with your rebel fleet long term. It's, it's not bad. So that's, uh, that's the conclusion of the video on the rebellion. Uh, that's what I would do. Uh, make a little revision to my original plan. I would, I would definitely go with this Mon Mothma team. So if you like these videos, if it's helping you at all, please give me a like, give me a subscribe, help my channel out. Thank you all. See you next time.